Hi, welcome to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. I'm excited to bring to you today this delicious ginger cake. Now this cake is good for any time of the year, most certainly at Christmas time or a special occasion like your anniversary or your birthday. And it only got a few simple ingredients and it tastes amazing. So if this interests you and you like to know how to make it, stick around and let's get started. Always an open door, Benita's Kitchen to yours. Benita's Kitchen, Kitchen, Kitchen. So to what yours. we're going to do first, we're going to be uh, putting these ingredients in the microwave. So we got one and a half cups of molasses. I'm using a fancy molasses there today, but you could use the molasses of your choice. This is um, brown sugar, and we got one cup of packed brown sugar. So we're gonna to toss that in to the molasses. And we got a half a cup of butter, and you can use margarine. And that's going in there as well. And now we're gonna put this in the microwave, and let it melt at about 30 seconds to one minute and then I'll show you what to do with it next. So this is really just to warm these ingredients, not to cook it because we don't want it hot, we just want it warm. So you're gonna mix this together lightly and then I'm gonna to toss it into my bowl to mix. So we'll do that next. I'm gonna be using my mixer today, but you can also make this cake and use your wooden spoon or uh, a mixer of choice. So now I'm gonna to toss those ingredients. Let me just see if I can get there into this bowl. And then we're gonna give it a light mixing and add in a few more ingredients as we go, but I'm going to tell you what those are. I'm just going to get this molasses out. Let's get mixing it. So now we're going to lift up our mixer. I'm going to put in there uh, some cinnamon and it's about three and a half teaspoonfuls of both cinnamon and ginger. And this is ground cinnamon and ground ginger. So now we're gonna get that mix in as well. So just let it mix for a, a couple seconds. That's all we need to do there. So now what I'm going to do next is crack our eggs into a bowl. So I'm using two large eggs here today. I'm cracking it into the bowl, make sure I don't have any shells in there. But what we're going to do before we even mix this up, we're going to be putting into our bowl three, uh, uh, three cups of sifted flour and our baking soda and baking powder. So I'm just gonna toss it in gradually. So I've already sifted the flour prior to, and we got the two teaspoonfuls of baking powder and two teaspoonfuls of baking soda, and a half a teaspoonful of sea salt. So now let's mix the dry ingredients in. So what I'm going to do is toss in there the two eggs and get that mixing through. Okay, so now let's tell you what to do next. This cake is starting to smell amazing already and we haven't done nothing, only just put the ingredients in the, in the bowl. I got two cups of uh, milk here. You could use 2% oil carnation, as, as in evaporate, uh, evaporated milk. Um, I'm gonna nook it for about 30 seconds in the microwave or you can do it on the stove top as well, just to get a very lukewarm. So now after the milk is warm. I'm going to pour it into the other uh, measuring cup with the remnants of the molasses in there just to clean out that and then pour it into the batter. The batter, <laughs> the batter, the batter, the batter, the, in the pan 
and get it mixed together and then we'll show you what that looks like. So pretty much now all we're going to do is gradually pour it in, in here in the bowl and mix it around till it's all combined. And that's all you need to do there. So now let's get this put into our bunt pan. So just lightly grease the pan with some butter or oil or some spray, whichever, whatever you got available. And then pour all of that delicious batter into the pan. And then scrape out the bowl real well. <laughs> unless don't, you, <laughs> don't scrape them too good. <laughs> unless you uh, got, got uh, got, Raymond in your family that <laughs> likes thinking out that bowl. I've got a spoon here, like, you know, I'll help on this. Listen, side. I know that you guys are out there saying, Raymond, this got raw onions in it. Listen, oh, this yeah. man has got a cast iron stomach. Yeah. He is not going to worry about those raw eggs. <laughs> He's just going to put his head right into this okay, bowl. Okay, pass eh? over. I got nothing else to do on this side. Way to go. So now, right now, this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to tell you how long to bake it for and what temperature. And let Raymond have a chance to get into that bowl. <laughs> Finger licking good. Oh my. So what you're going to have to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when you hear that beep, Put your pan in there in the center rack for about 50 minutes, could be a little less, could be a little more. Just check it when that uh, buzzer goes off, poke it in the, in the side there to see if it comes out uh, clean. Um, you, I'm using a bunt pan, but if you want to use a loaf pan or a cake pan with the two single cakes to make like a birthday cake, you could do that. This would be enough for those two brown cakes. So that's it. I'm going to show you what that looks like when it's baked. So what we'll do while we're waiting for our ginger cake to bake, we'll make our frosting. So this is a cream cheese frosting. One pack of, I got uh, the low fat uh, cream cheese because it's softer and it's 240 grams. And a half a cup of butter and you could use the hard margarine. So what we're going to do here is just start to mix this just to get it blended lightly. And we're going to be putting in there half a teaspoonful to a teaspoonful of ginger, that's the ground ginger, and a teaspoonful of vanilla. So I'm going to mix that in through. We're going to gradually put in there, of course I'm using my small bowl instead of my big bowl, gradually put in there some confectionery sugar and I got three cups of this so when I get down to about one cup I'll toss it all over into this bowl I guess to make room. I may not have to but let's see. Now I'm just going to convert it over. So pretty much what I'm doing here is making this delicious frosting and putting it in the fridge to cool down to have it ready for putting over that delicious ginger cake. And the taste of ginger in this is so good. You could put more uh, ginger in it, of course. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. That bowl is for you, by the way. <laughs> Means you got your ginger, your, your ginger cake bowl done. One second, oh, excuse me, goodness. camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna continue mixing this while you're having your little icing. That is absolutely perfect. So when I said put it in the fridge to cool down, not because it's hot, just because I want it for the icing, just to harden that little bit more so I can put it in my decorating bag as well. So now I'll show you what our cake looks like. Our ginger cake is baked. I got, got this one here taken out of the oven. Of course, he's blazing hot. We're going to let him cool and we got one done here in advance that we're going to icing and get it all printed up. Of course this is a icing now into two separate bowls. I got a green one here in, in the bag ready to go and this one I want to make it a little pink and this is some of my parcha berry uh, juice from the jam that I had 
and pretty much all I done is just put a little bit of water into the jam and mixed it around to make a little bit of some food coloring for it so I'm just gonna put a couple of little dabs I just want this one to be pink sort of not red and just mix that in just look see how it's just going in there nice so pretty much, I mean, you'll use the food coloring that you want and whatever you decide to do with your cake, you could leave it like it's there now. Beautiful, you can see that nice dark cake and just put a little few sprinkles of um, confectionery sugar over it or you can icing it, um, which I'm going to give it a light skimming of got my fresh ginger there on the side just kind of to say this is our ginger cake yum so pretty much i got it on this tray so as i can go around with it like this and it's easier to icing and i'm actually going to put a little skim around the sides too not a lot i still want to see the color of the cake of course that nice dark look to it it's absolutely delicious you guys and i hope this season or any season you get to make this cake your family's gonna love it of course and just give it a nice skim going right around i also got the pipette bag here with um, our decorating bag with a star on it and i'm just going to pull it down over my salad container and just put this pink icing in there and I'll put pull that down to get it ready so just kind of take it off and just get it down till you start to see it come out I like to have it a little bit more thicker than that but that should work perfect now let's decorate this cake just going to have it rough looking like this so as you can see the the cake and I'm going to be doing just a few fancy leaves for it first um, you again with the, the green you could use a uh, mint uh, leaf from your mint tea and make um, the green or you can just use your regular store-bought food coloring whichever I've done it as well with spinach I've had um, cooked a little bit of the spinach just enough to get uh, the greenness to make that mint look so just make it a little rough like this just give it a little jazzing up here and then we'll make a couple of little flowers so now I'm only just doing a little bit of a rough um, decorating right here but now you could fancy it up whatever way you want to it's gonna make a little flower there and just a little bit of gel on top How's that? <laughs> Looks good. Now Raymond had said that this didn't look very pink to him. It's only got like a little bit of pinkness in it uh, with the um, parchaberry um, juice that I had from the parchaberry jam I made. But like you said, you can decide whatever you want to do when it comes to that. You could use food coloring or just make your own made food coloring. So that's about it there. I'm gonna do a little bit around the sides and then I'm gonna cut into it and have a little taste. Say that again, we'll have a little taste. Absolutely, I know you, <laughs> <laughs> I know you will, Ray, but I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, well, now, when I was a young girl, I worked in a bakery with my uh, sister-in-law and uh, we bake cakes and bread and all sorts of things so i i learned a lot of my technique with her but also um i made my own wedding cake my sister's wedding cake so but this is it this is our ginger cake with a little bit of jazz there now how was that 
Yum. <laughs> this frosting tastes so good. I can see why Raymond always wants to clean out the bowl <laughs> because um, I've had my fix just of the frosting. Now you guys, this is it. This is a very simple recipe for a delicious ginger cake. I hope we made you excited to make yours today. This one is just cooling down air. Um, we probably end up gifting this one. And this one here will share up with our neighbors and friends. And hopefully our family will stop by for a cup of tea. So now I'm gonna cut into this, show you what it looks like on the inside and have a little taste. Oh my gosh, now just look at this cake. I'm gonna turn it towards you so you can see the inside. And just look, how oh, delicious. Now I'm gonna pop it down on my plate have a little taste. Yum. Of course, you know, this is always my favorite part is having a little taste. I mean, I enjoy baking it. Of course, you know, I do. But having a taste, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I was just thinking to myself, like, you know, because I'm usually the taster while you're doing mm. all the shows. Just wondering, how many times <laughs> have I tasted? How many videos have we done over the years? Mm. Good question. A lot, 400 and plus, 460 or more, yeah. That's a good taster, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> You've been tasting a long time, really. <laughs> I'm going to give you a taste of this, but not until yeah. I tell everyone that this is absolutely delicious. The ginger is just popping out there. Of course, you've got the flavors again of all of those other ingredients. You taste that little hint of the molasses and the cinnamon. Oh my gosh, so good. But the ginger just pops. If you want a little bit more, add it in there. Doesn't matter. Decorate it, leave it plain. Whatever way you have it, you're gonna love it. Two thumbs up by me, and now I'm going to give Raymond a little sample. Now I will tell you how you're going to get this recipe. We're going to have a post it under this video. You can either say see more or more. If you can't find it there, send me a message at bonitakitchen at gmail.com. You can also visit us on our Facebook page. We're posting up and coming recipes and our current ones, and of course our viewers' requests, um, and as well our website www.bonitaskitchen.com I got to end Raymond this oh. taste because you know he's going, to, he's going to be just vibrating I over there I just can't that give up on the tasting job you know he can't he yeah. can't and he's just going to love it <laughs> and we'll have another cup of tea with it after when he is finished with <laughs> his work because you know he can't have it all <laughs> No. And we'll share this delicious cake as well. I'll get back to the camera work. <laughs> so we're not going to take any more of your time. We know it's precious. And myself and Raymond can get air just going back and forth, being silly the whole day. But we're going to have our sugar take after this. On behalf of myself, Raymond, and our team, and from our kitchen to yours, you have an amazing day, and thank you for joining us. The next time you're visiting Newfoundland and Labrador, don't forget to check out the beautiful town of Victoria and join us again on Bonita's Kitchen. Join us by sea, a journey in culinary, always an open door. Bonita's Kitchen to yours. Bonita's Kitchen. Yours.